Are we running into any problems or what? Look at my racks, feel like Serena went from the back. Swing, pull like Jim, waves on swim, and a rock teams with the tag. What up, guys? We have uh, Chris on our show today. It's going to be a little bit different episode. Right now, what we're doing is installing that tire right there. But um, are we running into any problems or what? No, just it's hot. <laughs> it's definitely hot. Chris took care of my boat for me. This is uh, what year is this boat? I forgot. This is a 2020 Bonafide SS127. Special edition. Special edition. Chris helped me make it more reliable for the Kentucky Lake KBF National Championship 2022 event. So I'm gonna be traveling all the way out there and the last thing I wanna do is for have something break on me. So we're gonna do, Chris is gonna do an overall or an overview of what he did and why he did it, how he did it exactly. So uh, stay tuned what we're gonna we're gonna get this spare tire all rigged up and then we're gonna go through it. Okay, let's start, we'll start from the bow. We'll go from that, we'll go that way and work our, our way down. Dominic needed, the, the lights weren't working for us, so we, I, I rewired them and we'll show you how they, how they turn on and off. But we, we changed out the, the green light. The green light didn't work on the front. As you know, you need, you need navigation, red and green, when you have a motor on your, on your boat. So we replaced that. I replaced the electrical connections with these covers, these boot covers, and actually on the on his the other boot that's on the trolling motor itself actually fits in here so it gives it a waterproof tight uh, connection. So you don't have to worry about any water getting in there and making corrosion and stuff. We also changed this before it was a flat uh, opening right here for the wire to pull his he can pull the motor from his seating position to pull this down to release it. So we put this little grommet on here, so it raised up a little bit. So it's not 100% waterproof, but it's about at least, I'd say, 90% waterproof now. The water's not gonna flow right through. Yeah, like, talk a little bit about it, about like how, how the Bonafide takes on water, because we wanna tell our viewers like the absolute truth about you know how much water it takes on and right. the importance of it. The weight of the boat in the front, the water line, if you had no motor on the front of this boat, the water line for, for this is, Pretty much underneath this, I want to say this is the gunnel area. It, it's about here. But when you put the motor on here and the battery and, the, and your electrical boxes, it, it brings this down. So when you're going through waves and stuff like that, I mean, you know, one to two footers, the water is just constantly coming over the, the nose of the boat. It's not going to sink you. You're not going to go down, but it, it, it comes over. I mean, it has a great drainage system on there, but when you start putting things in this area this is the way the water flows it tends to go inside the hull on on these boats i've i had a, a two 127s and i had some problems at the beginning but i changed it i mean there's another there's other things that we can do on the front of his boat to make it even more waterproof i changed mine i put my connection for my motor actually i put it up here right so the water doesn't so the water doesn't flow through here but flow I, through here yeah, yeah but I resealed his connection right here so it should stop most of the water from going back. Right. There, right. I mean, so like that's a big tip for like new bona fide owners is, you know, you rather not drill um, on the flat surface where the water actually travels. You probably want to drill yeah. on the yeah. highest the surface. The highest spot you can. Highest spot you can so the water doesn't right. just create a waterfall into the hole. That's smart. It's super yeah. smart. Yeah, water flows through here. You can see it's shaped. The water flows through here. It's not going to, it's going to splash up here, but it's not going to sit up here and right. directly stay up here. Right. So actually, I actually put another layer of weather stripping around here. So when you do close this and lock it down, it, it, it's more protection. It's tighter, a tighter fit. As you can see, it's not, without that weather stripping in there, it would be a little bit loose. But now it's kind of tight and that'll stop some of the water from also going inside uh, the hull. Sweet. So I mean, you can do the buttons either way, get these latches. So now we can get into the little bit of the meat and potatoes of this. So Dominic has a, a tray that fits inside here. This fits inside this hatch. So you can actually, if you want, you can put rods into, into the, and store rods into this um, hole because it goes all the way through. But with this bucket right here, this brings all the electronics basically off the floor 
of the kayak. The wires are waterproof, water, they're marine wiring, so they're not gonna, they could sit in the water all day long, they're not gonna have no problem with them. But you really don't wanna have your black box and your, and your control panel uh, for your electronics in the water. So what I did was, I mounted them right here, you put the electro, this box right here, this is the Yak Power box, which controls his lights, um, turn on the, your fish finder on and off, and can turn, control the, the, the black box on and off. And I made a hole right here, so all the wiring is down here. And plus, this is an, another spot that the water will, if it get in here, it'll drain right through this hole right here. And actually, you can see, like, you know, each of the wires is nicely neat and put through there. And we screwed screwed them into the into the box so they're not moving around when he's transporting his box right uh, kayak around so yeah so this box right here it, it can come in and out if you want to like i said but it all goes underneath quick interruption just want to say sub to my channel double digit angler in the link below in my bio if you like what you see don't forget to follow my instagram at double digit angler to see more kbf championship and trail series and challenge series championship content coming up real soon expect more episodes with kbf with their national championship on my youtube and american bass iron man episodes on my youtube coming up very soon you're gonna you guys are gonna get some great content these next few weeks and next few months so stay tuned let's go back to the video oh and shout out to z pro lithium for being such a great partner throughout the end of the year anyways i'll catch you guys later hope you like the video peace now when it comes to dominic's wiring it was kind of it wasn't bad but it was you know old it was bad. Not, it was bad. I <laughs> jerry rigged like, it. Not I jerry rigged like it, guys. I want it, so I redid a, a few of the things on here. Um, if you come over here, you can see. Now this is the Yak Power. Like I said, this controls lights, um, the black box, his his fish finder, and you can turn it, it. It turns on and off right here. If we put the battery up to it, we can we can you can check that. So he, he can turn, for, before he had to open his hatch and turn his lights on and off and stuff like that. Now I mounted the control unit out here. So now all he has to do is come by, push this button, it turns it on. Number one is gonna be his, um, probably his fish finder. Number two is gonna be his black box. And then bow mount, bow lights will be on B and so forth and so on. So what product is that one? This is the Yak Power System. Okay, sweet. Yeah, yes, this is, makes everything nice plug and play. We'll put the links in the description of like everything, all the products, etc. Yeah, this is this is like the simplest way. If you want to do your kayak in the simplest way, this is it. This is the best way right here, I believe. I love the system. <laughs> right? Yeah. So, okay, moving on down. So, before Dominic had a problem with his fish finder turning on and off, and come to find out that his power unit or the power cord was was bent and it was separated right here at this joint right here. Whenever you put your fish finder, no matter on the side, in the front, whatever, you want to keep these wires as straight as possible. You don't want to have that constant bend in them because that's what causes those problems. Over over time, that's what's going to do. So I just I rewired that wire and I, I put covers on all the wires to make it look nice and neat. Um, I, I turned his, these two, um, openings in the boat they were turned up so the opening was up here so like i said before the water flows through here and when the water would flow it would go right into the boat in this direction too so what i did was i turned them around so now the water it's not like i said it's not a hundred percent waterproof but these ones will let the water just kind of flow around and go through his scupper holes this one right here it's it's high enough and behind uh, this part of the boat where the water is going to drain you can see the drains comes here and goes right through here So it doesn't really have a problem in there, but I did put a new grommet in there. So it's um, water resistant way water resistant Like I said, I covered everything make it look nice and neat and stuff too. Over here Dominic had <laughs> We went fishing one day and Dominic said he lost his mount for his uh... Yep, the mounting plate <laughs> for the for the live scope. For his live scope. So we added two of these on here to on, on the track. Oh, and if you guys want to see that that <laughs> thing fall off and me Jerry rigging a yak attack rod holder um, in place for for that uh, 
live scope transducer go check out this video i'm gonna put it up on top but yeah sorry go ahead chris <laughs> so so we put so i put these on for the tra um out for the track it's 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 tied down pretty tight right here and i also gave him a little tether right here so it, so he can't lose it so i screwed into here and screwed into the bolt back here in place on the on this track right here and so if, if he loses these at least it's just gonna hang right there. It's not he's not gonna lose the whole thing anymore. You want the jury to it too much <laughs> anymore. Right. Okay. I should have done that before. <laughs> Gotta spend an extra seventy bucks for that mounting plate. You learn. Yep. <laughs> Live and learn. Yep, exactly. So now like I changed the the um, the connector in the front. I put new Anderson plugs on his his boat and this is how it works in the front too with the motor coming to the power comes all the way to here. If you notice these Anderson plugs here, they're inset inside these rubber, I would say, well, connectors, I guess? No, rubber connectors, what they're called. Uh, well, we'll figure out what they're called. But anyway, yeah. so each of the, they, they each have, they're different. So to make them completely waterproof, you have one that's a male, one's a female. And they connect to each other this way to make a watertight seal, like that. So when you're going down, you know, going down the raw, down to the water, stuff like that, and it's splashing. It's not going to get in there and make your wires corrosive and give you a short in there, and then you're stuck in the middle of the lake somewhere. And every time you do these, you pull these apart. You pull them apart from the sides of this, never by the wires. And then when you're storing it and traveling, put it on a trailer. You put your cover, your dust covers back on. And now they're protected. Doc wanted to have his his battery, his 50 amp battery, in in his black pack right here. So what we did, I put a uh, yak power through kit on here and also the yak power um, wiring system is hooked up to back here so Dominic if you ever wants to take his his black pack out of his boat and store it in the house or when he gets someplace he can just unplug it right here and he's good to unstrap it and he's good to go he takes it all with him so when he comes back to the water everything is already in here he just puts it back in the boat straps it down and plugs it in and the plug right here so nice and simple, and, and it battery sits right there. He's going to put extra crates in back there. All right, let's see if it powers on then, Chris. <laughs> so up here, this is the Yak Power System. We turn it on here. Nice. So now we got number one is is for the um, his fish finder. Number two is for the black box right here. And BMM, bow, mid, stern. This controls the lights that are on the front of this kayak right for here. For both of them? or. Yep. Yeah, for okay, both, for red both, and both green. Lights. Yep, both okay. red, red and green lights. They're on right now. So if you want to put lights in the in the inside here, you can put yep. them on there. Or, or lights in the back, you can put them on there. But now he can control all his power from right here. He doesn't have to open his hatch and unplug things and turn things off. Right. It's all right here at hands. Reach. Which is how I rigged it last time. Is I didn't make that hole and mounted it there. So I wouldn't be able to power down my black box to save battery. Yes. I wouldn't be able to restart it because... These live scope units, like sometimes you have to restart the unit in order for it to read right in the water. Sometimes you need to reset your graph sometimes and reaching back and forth in that glove box, it's gonna take on a lot of water if you go up front and then try to reach and power it off and on. Right. So that was a good thing that Chris installed it right yeah. there. So we leave this, we can leave, now you can leave this closed and latch it. And now everything's controlled out here. You'd have to get up in there and, and undo anything. And just say, like I said, keep you don't want to keep that black box running. If you had it straight, wired straight to your battery, eventually yeah. it's gonna burn itself out. So you wanna be able to have something that you can flick a switch and turn that on and off. Definitely exactly. a good thing to do. Yeah, those life scopes units are a lot of money, so Yes, yes. So that's an insurance button right there. I've I've got history with this boat from we had it from before, so it was nice to have it back in back in my garage but uh so well now, thanks chris yeah so we should get you ready for kentucky and hope you bring home that championship for sure it'll definitely yes, help me out yes sir i definitely wanted to bring it to chris because i brought it to chris because he's really good with this boat i mean he's worked on pa 14s pa 12s old towns new canoes, bona fides. So like he has a lot of experience in it and I've seen his work, I've seen his boat. He treats it like a Ranger 520, 521, you know, if there's a 521, I don't know. 
But um, sh give a shout out to yourself on my video, your IG handle, so people could follow you, keep up to date with like the next and le next and greatest kayak you you're building. <laughs> um, and then also, yeah, like shout out your handle because people have been hitting me up, like where do you get all these parts and et cetera, and like what's the future of hook a brother up, right. you know? Like what is? Well, my my. My Facebook, my Facebook is um, Chris Cabral, obviously, and Instagram it's Hook a Brother Up. Um, you can go there and you can see all the stuff that I have done. Um, and on my TikTok it's In a Yak 24/7. You check me out there too. And he's coming here now, and the, the shop's about to change. It looks a mess now, but where are we? <laughs> <laughs> that was a what was it a 35 or a 37 right look at 35 oh cheap 37 cheap 37 we're redoing the shop and um yeah no i i enjoy doing the kayaks and hopefully we can um if you guys want you know more information about uh dominic's parts or dominic's boat or my boat or some of the other ones i've done just give me a instagram message or a and what's your what's your location right now like we're we're uh i'm here in whittier california but I, you know, I'm pretty much central from anywhere from between San Diego and LA. You can drop boats off. I can come pick boats up if not too far. The thing about Chris's work is like he, I swear, like this kayak was done a few days ago and I just dropped it off like what, seven days ago? Yeah. Six days ago. So not only is Chris's work awesome and it's, it's so clean, everything works like how you want it. But I feel like the best part of it is like when you want your boat ready and you want to go fishing right away and you can't wait, drop it off to this guy because he doesn't make you wait at all. Follow him up on uh, Instagram at Hook a Brother Up, TikTok. I'm not really on there, but you're uh, like on a kayak 24/7 or what? In a kayak 24/7. In a kayak 24/7, and then Facebook, you're just Chris Cabral. Right. But later on, he's thinking about making up a an actual company name. So right. we'll stay tuned for that. Definitely, definitely look out for that. It'll, yeah. be, it'll be posted soon. Take it to Chris. All right. Anyways, peace. Thank you. Hope you guys like this video. Sub! <laughs> Very cool. Like the video. <laughs> like, subscribe. <laughs> hit, this, hit the button.